pole zero stability, pole zero plot and stability of the system. Um, as we discussed earlier uh, in one of the videos of this chapter, uh, what are poles and what are zeros of the system? So zeros are roots of the numerator polynomial of H of C. And poles are the roots of the denominator polynomial of H of C. Uh, at zeros, that is at the roots of the numerator polynomial, polynomial at those points, the system value H of Z become zero. And that's why they're called zeros. And at poles, if you put the value of a pole in H of Z, uh, then the system value is gonna become undefined because pole is the root of the denominator. So if you put root of a denominator, then you will get a factor which will be zero in the denominator. And at that uh, factor, of course, because of that factor, at that point, the uh, value of H of Z becomes undefined. But if you're going towards a pole, then the value of H of Z will keep on increasing. So how do you determine the stability of a system from its pole zero plot. Okay, so first, what, is, what does pole zero plot means? Pole zero plot means that you have um, the Z plane, right? Z is a complex number as we discussed. So that means you have a Z plane, which is, as you can see over here, let's say this is a Z plane, uh, where the uh, vertical axis is where you have the imaginary numbers and horizontal axis where you have the real numbers. Uh, so in the Z plane, when you put poles of the uh, the roots of the numerator that is zeros you represent that by zeros as you can see this is one of the roots of uh, this function right here let me grab my pencil so this is one of the uh, zeros of this function z minus 0 0.5 of course the root is going to be z minus 0 0.5 equals 0 so z is equal to 0 0.5 is the root of the numerator so this is a zero of H of Z, which is right here on X axis at 0 0.5 and represented by zero or O. And likewise in the denominator, when you factor out, uh, first you write this in terms of the positive power of Z's. And then when you factor out the denominator, then you have two factors, which are two complex conjugate roots. Whenever you have a complex conjugate number, uh, I mean, whenever you have a complex number, it will always come as complex conjugate, wh whether it is in the numerator or denominator. So this is 0 0.6 minus plus J 0 0.3. So you have a 0 0.6, uh, negative 0 0.6, sorry, because again, Z plus 0 0.6 minus J 0 0.3 when you, is equal to zero when you calculate the root, it's gonna be z is equal to negative 0 0.6 plus j 0 0.3 and the same thing will be this that's going to be negative 0 0.6 minus j 0 0.3 so you have negative 0 0.6 which is right here and then 0 0.3 and negative 0 0.3 so you have one pole here and one pole here complex conjugate poles right so this is what we call pole zero plot of h of c this is how you do pole zero plot now observe this circle. This circle is the unity circle. That is all the points on this circle has the radius of one, right? All the points on this circle has the radius of one. And this unity circle plays an, an extremely important role uh, in the determination of the stability of the system. Okay, now stability is only determined from poles of the system, location of poles of the system. Uh, location of zeros do not contribute in the determination of the stability of the system. So although you are plotting both poles and zeros, if you have a pole zero plot, but you will only consider poles when you have to determine stability of the system. All right, so how do you determine the stability from the poles? <coughs> All right, so and there are, let me go to that uh, plot right here. So location of poles of H of Z and the stability criteria. If all the poles are inside the unit circle, right? The unit circle, the circle that we just discussed. If all the poles, poles are within the unit circle, then the system will be stable. And again, a system is stable means that 
uh, or the system is stable means the output is stable. What does output is stable means? Output is stable means that for any stable input, any bounded input, uh, bounded. Remember the chapter number two when we discuss bounded input, bounded, um, bounded, uh, be both bounded input, bounded output. So for any bounded input, you will have a bounded output. What does that mean? That if your output is either constant, increase, uh, decreasing as time is increasing or oscillating between two numbers. So if it is a uh, uh, negative exponential, if it is a constant function, DC, or if it is a sinusoid, then you consider your system to be a stable system, right? Uh, and for a stable system, as long as h of z, you can determine from h of z, so for uh, any stable input or bounded input, again, what are bounded inputs? Bounded inputs are the inputs that do not increase as time increases. So either they will decrease or they will be constant or they will oscillate like sinusoid. But if they are increasing, they are not bounded inputs. So for any bounded input, if your determination from h of z is that all the poles of h of z are within the unit circle then for any bounded input your output will be bounded as well and your system will be stable okay so that's why your unit circle plays an extremely important role in the determination of the stability of the system that if all the poles are within the unit circle then of course your output will be stable uh, consider that uh, considering if the input is stable or bounded. All right, if any of the pole is outside the inner circle, any one of them, you need an, uh, only one pole outside the inner circle, the system is going to become unstable for any bounded input. So even though the input will be bounded input, output will not be bounded. It will is increase as the time will increase. And why? Because when you have the first condition in the time domain, basically. Uh, your uh, your um, transient uh, the transient factor so for example if your input is uh, unit step right so in the in the for the output there will be a unit step uh, the unit step function so let's say you will have three u n y n three u n but in addition to that you may also have five zero point five to the power n u n let's say what does this mean that you have a pole located at negative 0 0.5 you have a pole located at negative 0 0.5 okay so if all of the poles are within the unit circle whether they are complex pole or real pole then the real part if they are complex pole or if they are real pole then the real part of the complex pole or the real poles, uh, if, if there is no complex pole, they will be raised to the power n. And since they will be less than 1, as time increases, this factor is going to decrease. So this is going to die, and the only thing will be left will be whatever the response, the, the, sino, the steady state response, uh, depend based upon what type of input you're using, bounded input you're using. Now, if any one of the pole is outside the unit circle, then instead, then the, the power to the power n is going to be more than 1, right? This is going to be more than 1. And of course, that will keep on increasing as time will, in, will increase. So the system is going to become unstable. You need, again, you need one pole, out, just one pole outside the unit circle is going to make it unstable. <coughs> okay. Now, if you have non-repeated poles on the unit circle, so you have the unit circle, right? Now, if you have a pole over here, z is equal to one, let's say, or if you have a pole over here, z is equal to negative one, or if you have a pole over here, if you have a pole here, of course, this is complex conjugate, uh, this is complex, so there will be a conjugate here, so complex conjugate. And that pole, of course, let's say, I don't know, uh, A plus JB and A minus JB, okay? So they are non-repeated poles on the unit circle. That is, there is no repetition of this pole at that point on the unit circle. So if you have a situation like this, any pole that is non-repeated, but it, it is on the unit circle, you cannot determine the stability of the system from just h of z and you're going to call it marginally stable system 
so for a bounded input your system your output of the system can either become stable or unstable if the system is marginally stable when is going to become stable it will be stable if for x of z you don't have any pole of x of z at the same point as the pole or poles from h of z that are on the unit circle so let's say if h of z is z um, you know, I, I don't know, the, the H of Z produce a pole over here, let's say, a complex conjugate pole. Now, these poles do not coincide with either A plus JB, Z minus one, Z plus one, whatever, right? So, you're, you will still, if you make the uh, pole zero plot of Y sub Z, this will be the pole zero plot of Y sub Z, you is, will still not have any repeated poles on the unit circle for Y sub Z. So, your output will be stable output your output will be a stable output in that case now and on the, on the other hand if x of z is a unit step function then your uh, x of n is a unit step function then your x of z will be z a over z minus one let's say it's just a constant now if you put this x of z or y of z which is x of z h of z if you put the pole zero plot of that y of z now what's going to happen you have z is equal to 1 already from h of z right on the unit circle and now you have another z is equal to 1 because of x of z so now you have repeated poles on the unit circle and in that case your output is going to be unstable because when you convert when you do the you know the whole thing and then you take the inverse z transform your output will contain a term which will be n uh, n u n basically something like that you will have a term something like that n u n and that term of course will keep on increasing as your uh, time is increasing so once again marginally stable system are systems that you cannot determine just from h of z if the output will be stable or unstable uh, and marginally stable system are the systems uh, for which you have at you have at least one pole, a non-repeated pole, on the unit circle for h of z. And when you have x, if the pole of x coincide with the pole of h, which is on the unit circle, now you have a repetition repetition of pole on the unit circle, and the system is going to become unstable. On the other hand, if x of z does not produce any pole, that will coincide with the pole of h of z which is on the unit circle then your system uh, the output of the system is going to be stable output all right so this is a little bit tricky but it's not it's not that bad all right unstable system we discuss one of the unstable condition is that at least one pole outside the unit circle will make the system unstable now there is another condition as we discussed right over here that if you have repeated poles on the unit circle so if h of z has repeated poles on the unit circle let's say h of z is 2 over z minus 1 is square right so now you have two poles at z is equal to 1 z is equal to 1 and z is equal to 1 you have two poles at z is equal to 1 now that means you have repeated poles on the unit circle so irrespective of where the poles of x of z are located your y of z will have repeated poles on the unit circle and that will make the system unstable irrespective of what is x of z so remember for marginally stable system the location of poles of x of z that matters based on the location of the poles of x of z the system can either be stable or unstable or the output can either be stable or unstable but if h of z already has repeated poles on the unit circle the system will be unstable irrespective of the location of the poles of x of z so that's how you will determine the system stability from the pole zero plot now i just want to um, kind of advise you that let's say if i'm giving you you know, you know h of z an equation 
uh, the first thing that you do if you are uh, if you have to determine where the poles and zeros are is you're gonna take the you're gonna factor out the numerator and factor out the denominator and in MATLAB you can use the roots command and it's gonna give you the roots of uh, the numerator and roots of the denominator uh, now if roots of the denominator are uh, complex roots right now it is kind of hard for you to figure out where that exactly complex root is going to be located if you're plotting I mean if it is on the unit circle outside the unit circle inside the unit circle so always always uh, convert the complex root into the polar form that is the magnitude and the angle okay always convert the complex root complex pole in the polar form and if the magnitude or the radius is one or very close to one then it is going to be on the unit circle and your system is going to be marginally stable and if you have multiple of course poles then it's going to be um, an unstable system okay so remember that uh, it will be hard for you to determine remember just by looking at this so make sure convert into polar form and then you will be able to determine and, and again if it if this thing is very close to zero assume it is uh, I mean not close to zero if this thing is very close to one assume it is on the unit circle so for example it is if it is 0 0.99 don't take it 0 0.99 take it one if it is 1.01 .01, take it as one if it is 0 0.96 then yes I mean don't take it as one but 0.99, 0 0.1.01, 0 .01, that will be considered as one. All right, so this is the discussion of location of poles uh, and stability of the system. <coughs> All right, uh, let's see. So this is um, a picture from your book, basically, that shows you the location of different poles and how the system is going to behave. So again, if you have... Um, uh, in this case, uh, I believe X is uh, impulse, I believe. Yeah, X is an impulse right here. X is an impulse for all of these. So basically, Y sub Z is equal to H of Z. You are plotting impulse response. So as you can see, you have a pole inside the unit circle, and the impulse response is going down. That means it's a, point, it's a, it's a stable system. Uh, here, pole is outside the unit circle impulse response is increasing uh, that is the output is increasing uh, unstable system uh, you have uh, it looks like single pole uh, on the unit circle and then you have a marginally stable system for that output is constant uh, output is constant in this case because of course x of n is delta n now if x of, x of n will be use of n right if it is going to be a, uh, a step function then the one of the poles or the pole of x of z is going to be at, uh, at z is equal to one and then you will have a repeated pole and then this value will be increasing instead of being constant so that will become make the system unstable all right z is equal to negative one again um, marginally stable system the system is uh, stable because it is just oscillating between one and minus one, right? And finally, you have repeated roots on the unit circle and the output is increasing. That will make the system to be unstable system irrespective of the input. So this is uh, a graphical example of the location of poles and how the system is behaving. Okay, so an example. A uh, DSP filter is given by this equation right here. Uh, draw the poles you plot and determine the stability of the system. If the input is 5 un, determine the system's response. So we first factored out the numerator and denominator using the roots function. So numer numerator is this and denominator is this. <coughs> so we went ahead and we plotted the poles you plot. Uh, in, in uh, on uh, on the Z plane um, so I created this uh, little program there's a function in MATLAB an octave which is called PZ map PZ map can also plot pole zero plot the only thing in PZ map that I did not see is it cannot of course uh, create the cir uh, cir uh, circle a unit circle and then it does not create the axis so I went ahead I wrote my own program a small program very easy to write uh, all you have to do is uh, calculate the roots, then uh, plot the roots, 
using zeros for uh, numerator and crosses with the num uh, denominator and then I hold on to the same plot uh, I created axis on the same plot those are two lines basically I created the lines and then I wrote down the equation of a circle with the radius 1 and then I plotted that uh, circle uh, on the same plot and then I let the plot go with hold off. So anyways, uh, so as you can see this is a pole zero plot uh, location of poles observe two poles are on the unit circle and that you can also see when I converted these complex number into polar form. So they are one angle 75 degrees and one angle negative 75 degrees. So it is very hard for you if you're plotting this it's going to be hard for you to determine where exactly they will be located. So make sure convert that into polar form and then you will exactly know where it is going to be located if or you know if it will be located on the unit circle. That's that's your main concern if it is located on the unit circle. So system is marginally stable because you have non repeated poles on the unit circle. So let's go ahead and apply 5UN and see how the output is going to be. So we went ahead, um, x of h of z, x of z, we uh, converted 5un into uh, z domain, 5z over z minus 1, and then did the same thing like we did in the last chapter. Um, you know, I used residue function to uh, create the partial fractions, and then this is, these are the partial fractions, converted this into polar form, and then used the last relationship in the z table that is given to us for, for these to write this in terms of cosine and then the first one are simply this is a unit step function and this is 0 0.5 to the power n right so this is your output of the system as you can see output of the system is your um, constant value 47.22 steady state I'm talking about so 47.22 47.22 and then a sustained sinusoidal function 13.916 cosine 75 degree and 140 so it is going to be this will be the steady state response this is going to die of course this is transient this is going to die as n will increase this will become smaller and smaller so your value the peak value is going to be 47.22 plus 13.916 and the negative peak is going to be 47.22 minus 13.916 but this will be a stable system because it is not increasing as time is increasing the steady state value is not increasing as time is increasing so this marginally stable system uh, response is uh, a stable system okay example 6.7 uh, you have this h of z given to you and xn is 5u and the same signal and we will have to determine um, that what type of system do we have again we went ahead and, and calculated the roots of the numerator and denominator these are the roots observe observe you have a single pole on the unit circle at z is equal to 1 so it's a marginally stable system from h of z all right now x of z also has a pole at z is equal to 1 so what's gonna happen when you create the pole 0 plot of y sub z you're gonna get two poles on z is equal to 1 one from h of z and one from x of z and now the system is gonna become unstable so you go ahead and you calculate the inverse Laplace transform after you make the uh, equation uh, partial fraction equation and inverse plus transform observe is negative 2.5 plus 5 n u n so negative 2.5 u n plus 5 n u n and this factor which will die of course but what will be sustained is negative 2.5 which is a constant but for from this 5 n the value of the function will keep on increasing output hence this system is going to be unstable system so these two examples are the examples of marginally stable system where one system output is a stable sustained sinusoid uh, offset by 47 volt and the second out uh, system is unstable because in the second system uh, y sub z has two poles on the unit circle one from h of z one from x of z and that makes the system unstable because that produced 5n u n okay all right next we're going to discuss dig digital filter frequencies